All right. How's it going, everyone? Hey, great. Should We're be, glad. Should We're... be good. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. That's great. Well, hey, there's nothing like a little bit of technical difficulties. Hey, going that's, on. that's what comes with being the first. So I'm yeah, totally used to it. <laughs> You're the first. So that's exciting, man. Yes. Very awesome. excited. A little pressure, but I'm ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, mute myself and turn my camera off and Colin is in the room with me. And yes, uh, Dr. Bierke, we are COVID compliant. We are six feet apart. We are all wearing masks. So uh, I'm going to uh, un or mute myself and I'm going to turn it over to uh, Colin. Thank you, Sam. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. I appreciate you joining me. And uh, I know we're doing this for the first time online. Sam, I appreciate you being our, uh, our first guest and kind of doing this online. So I'll introduce myself. My name's Colin. I'm the SAMA president. And uh, thanks everyone for joining us. And I'm going to introduce our first guest. So Sam is going to be, he's a first lieutenant. Uh, he's a social media creator, photographer, and public affairs officer at the United States Air Force. He handles digital media, digital media, community relations, civic outreach, and media outreach for the Air Force. Uh, our lieutenant here is currently stationed in Scott Air Force Base outside of the St. Louis, Missouri area, where he is, he is assigned to the 375th Air Mobility Wing. He was previously signed to the F-22 Rapper Demonstration Team, where he spent the 2019 and 2020 season traveling the world and helping to capture, edit, and showcase the story and mission of the F-22 Raptor. In his spare time, Sam enjoys photography and video production, where he creates content on his YouTube channel, Instagram, TikTok, uh, and presents it to the uh, to the social media and his followers so please welcome sam at home <laughs> thanks so much colin that was great um it's, it's awesome to be here guys i was looking forward to maybe coming in person but i know with everything going on i'm still glad we're able to do it virtually and uh yeah it's just great to be here and props to all you guys for what you're going through right now i can't imagine being a college student like in the COVID atmosphere so uh yeah shout out to you guys so um i guess right off the bat what i want to say is my goal is not to get everyone here in the next 45 minutes to like go immediately sign up for the Air Force. I am not an official Air Force recruiter. That's not my goal. However, what my goal is, is to kind of give you a little bit of uh, background and maybe some of the opportunities that are available in the military, some stuff that I've experienced in my career so far. Um, and really just to answer some of the questions you guys may have, because I'm sure some of you may be considering the military route, whether that's for pilots or something else. Um, and it really is a really, um, I don't know, kind of an interesting and a unique way to go about it with full of some really incredible benefits. Um, but before we get started, I want to go a little bit uh, into kind of a backstory on, on about me, because I think that can kind of help set the scene. So um, <laughs> the first thing I should say is like, uh, like Colin mentioned, I'm a first lieutenant in the United States Air Force, but I am not a pilot. And uh, I think that is something that a lot of people who don't know much about the military kind of confuse a little bit. In fact, I mean, the amount of times I've been asked if I'm a pilot is, is crazy. A lot of people who don't know much about the military assume that when they hear someone's in the Air Force that all of them are flying F-22s or something. And it's actually about 4% of, uh, of people in the Air Force are actually pilots. But what I will say is that for the most part, the big mission set, kind of what all the different career fields go to support is the flying mission. We are the United States Air Force. So at the end of the day, like flying is kind of what runs us, what pays the bills and what keeps the lights on at the end of the day. Um, but with that being said, um, I grew up in a little bit of an Air Force family. So I came from kind of an aviation background. I'm from Dallas, Texas. And for those of you who know, you know, there's a big airport in DFW. So my dad's been flying for American Airlines since I was a kid. And before that, he was actually an Air Force pilot as well. He flew the KC-135. That's an aerial refueling. It's a tanker. He always used to say, can't kick ass without tanker gas when I was growing up. And I was like, man, I want to be a tanker pilot when I get older. So <laughs> kind of all throughout growing up, I went to a few air shows as a kid and I was like, man, that would be super cool to be a pilot. So if you guys are kind of following along with what I'm saying here is like, I realized that I wanted to be in the Air Force and I wanted to fly. And so to me, the best option to get there in terms of the military route. Now, I know there are a bunch of other great schools like UND in terms of just aviation in general. But for the military route, the Air Force Academy provides what I like to say is the best opportunity to fly in the Air Force. Um, you guys know it's a school over there in Colorado Springs. And I'm, uh, I was brought to my attention that y'all's new president, Andy Armacost, he was actually the dean for me when I was at the Air Force Academy, and I loved him. So I'm glad he went over there to y'all's school. And then I also heard y'all's new dean is actually coming over from the Air Force as well. So I'm glad they're putting a lot of the, uh, the Air Force in y'all's school, and that should hopefully help that aviation department a lot too, which is really, really cool going forward. But anyways, the Air Force Academy was what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to fly, and I was like gung-ho about it and ready to go. 
But as you guys know, I'm not a pilot. So you may be asking like what changed. And um, for me, it was kind of a bunch of things, right? So at the Air Force Academy, pretty much every single person there wants to be a pilot. It's a pretty much just a breeding ground for pilots. And that's amazing. And it's really, really cool. And the opportunities are really endless. But somewhere along my sophomore year, my junior year, I kind of realized that I wanted to just branch out a little bit, maybe do something a little bit different. And also, I'll, I'll, I won't lie to you guys, I got a ride in the back of an F-16 when I was a sophomore and I like puked everywhere. And I was like, oh man, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> so anyways, I started thinking about, hey, what are some other options in the Air Force? Um, you know, maybe if I don't want to go this route and fly, maybe there's something else I can do where I'm around aircraft still, because I love aviation. Maybe I can be on the flight line and maybe I can serve in another capacity. And um, for me, that career field was called public affairs. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm a public affairs officer. When you guys think about the Air Force, you probably have no idea that we have stuff like public affairs, right? Because in a nutshell, what the PA career field does is we really just tell the Air Force's story, right? So think about it. There are missions going on all across the world, literally in the middle of the Middle East, all the way down to South America, all across the US, the Air Force is flying, fighting, winning, whatever you want to say. And uh, it can be pretty complex. But taxpayers, the general public, the civilians, they're the ones that you know pay our bills. And so Congress mandated that we kind of share what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So my career field exists to do that, to really package that information up, to make it easy to digest for the everyday person to understand. And, and that's what I do in public affairs, right? So just kind of in a nutshell, my, my job is uh, doing like social media for the Air Force, you know, writing stories, doing photography, working with local media to help tell the Air Force's story, to, you know, just make everything public out there. And so it's really, really exciting. Um, because not only do I get to be around aircraft a lot and be on the flight line, but I've just had an opportunity to meet a bunch of different people, travel the world and, and really have an awesome experience. And there aren't too many jobs, I'd say, in the Air Force outside of being a pilot where you really get to do that. And so um, I'm lucky and I've had an amazing, amazing, amazing time. So, yeah, that's kind of how it started and um, kind of why I shifted away from being a pilot. But uh, yeah, so when I graduated from the Air Force Academy, it wasn't too long ago, back in 2018, so I'm not too far removed from where you guys are, um, I actually got stationed at Langley Air Force Base for my first assignment. Now, a lot of people, when I say Langley, they're like, oh, he was in the CIA. No, so that's a different Langley. That's Langley CIA, which is up near DC, but Langley Air Force Base is actually located um, in the very bottom tip of Virginia, so near Norfolk and Virginia Beach. And uh, Langley is one of the oldest bases in the Air Force. So they have um, a crazy history of what they've flown there. They actually flew airships there back in the day during the age of the blimps. If you guys have ever read into that history, which is really, really cool. But long story short, one crashed, burst into flames, and that kind of ended the airship era. Uh, a lot of people died. Very tragic. But um, now Langley is the home of the first fighter wing. So pretty much that traces its roots all the way back to World War II. And they had P-51 Mustangs flying out of Langley. But uh, right now it has... Um, really the biggest squadron of F-22 Raptors. So when I got my first base, I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. They've got F-22s here and um, I'm a public affairs officer, which means I get to photograph them and kind of go out on the flight line. And I was stoked. I remember it was my very first week at Langley and we were doing unit PT. So in the military, you are uh, forced to do physical training a couple of times a week. And so we were running the base perimeter as an office and all of a sudden an F-22 takes off. And I thought, oh, it's just going to take off and fly and do its mission and come back. But it started doing like a demo, right? It started, you know, doing tactical pitches and pulling G's and doing crazy maneuvers. And I was running and I looked up and I was like, what's going on? And someone told me, they're like, Sam, that's the F-22 demo team. And I'm like, the F-22 what? And they're like, the F-22 demo team. They travel to air shows all around the world showcasing those performances and capabilities of this crazy, crazy jet, right? You know, one of the most technologically advanced jets out there. And so I was like, wow, are there any opportunities for like public affairs to be on that team to like travel? And they're like, actually there are. And um, apparently they were looking to bring someone on their team for the new season because their previous public affairs person uh, had to change or had to move bases. So um, I was like, wow, I looked up that morning. and I was like, I'm going to do that one day. So over the next six months, I started, you know, I was working at the base level, just the typical PA shop on base doing, you know, I was leading tours for ROTC units and junior high kids. And the whole time I was like, I want one day to be on that F-22 demo team. 
So again, flashing forward six months later, I got a call um, from my supervisor and she's like, hey, Sam, they're interviewing for a new public affairs position on this team. And I would like to submit your name up if you're interested. And I was like, am I interested? Of course I'm freaking interested. And so I uh, put together a little package. I went in and did several rounds of interviews. And long story short is I was selected to be a member of the F-22 demo team for two years, starting in 2019 and going through 2020. So after that, um, wow, really hit the ground running. I'm sure you guys have been out to a few air shows, especially if you're aviation fans, whether that's Oshkosh or down in Florida or anything. I don't know what you guys have been to, but I'm sure you've heard of the demo team. And it was an amazing, amazing experience. For two years, I got to travel really all over the world, documenting the jet, running our social media, doing photography and video. And probably my favorite part wasn't even related to all the social media stuff and the photography. It was, uh, it was being able to have a platform to reach just thousands and thousands of young men and women on a daily basis, right? Young kids out there who maybe needed a little bit of inspiration to want to serve or who loved aviation, but you know, had never had the chance to really get up close to a jet. So when we would go to shows, I would be the ones, I would be the one kind of setting up all the tours we'd do. And um, it was really, really cool to bring people out to the jet and, and see them and just, uh, you know, bring bring the F-22 and the magic of that aircraft to a lot of different people. So, yeah, I mean, I got to go to places like Dubai and Singapore, Chile, Canada, pretty much every single base in the U.S. with this jet as a part of our small 13 member team. Um, we take two jets to every show, but we only have one pilot who's qualified to fly the demo. So unlike the Air Force Thunderbirds or the Blue Angels, who I'm sure you guys have heard of, the F-22 is a smaller footprint, right? We only have like 13 people versus the Thunderbird and Blue Angels have like 130 people on their team. So my goal was to like, essentially for two years, just no life it, just give everything I had to this team to put out as much content as possible on social media. And so I fell in love with photography from this job. I fell in love with, you know, creating video content and social media. And it was a really, really exciting opportunity. Probably the highlight, because I know I get this question a lot. So I'll kind of jump the gun is people ask kind of my favorite part. Um, and anytime I got to do like an aerial photo shoot was really, really cool. So I remember one time we were down in uh, South Carolina for an air show and <laughs> my boss, his name was Loco Lopez at the time. He was uh, our F-22 demo pilot. He said, Sam, I need you to be at base operations at 0800 in the morning. This was Saturday of air show week. He's like, and bring your camera. And I'm like, oh man, what's going on? And so I get out of my hotel and I drive there that morning and I walk in the room and they're sitting around a table is you know, all six of the Blue Angels pilots, as well as a few other members of their team. And he's like, Sam, we are doing a dissimilar formation. We're going to fly the Blue Angels diamond and the Delta. And we're going to put an F-22 right above it. And we're going to fly off the coast of South Carolina. And we want you to sit in the back of a Casa 212 aircraft and take some incredible photos. And I was like, wow, okay, this is great. So I, this is my first time ever doing an air-to-air -air shoot. And I had the chance to do it with the Blue Angels and the F-22. And it was just really, really cool. And so those photos actually hanging on my apartment wall back here, but, um, had an amazing time with that. So, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but if you guys have any questions, we can talk about it a little later, but I had an amazing time. It was, it was really fun. Um, but at the same time, it was one of the hardest things I ever did. It was constant working, you know, I'd work all day and then I'd have to edit in the night. So when the rest of the team was done for the day and they were going out and having fun, I was kind of back in my hotel room, editing videos and photos and trying to get content out there ready to go. Um, but it was awesome. I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, that's just one opportunity that the Air Force presented me. Um, there's been many more with that. So um, so I finished that up actually just a few months ago, guys. So my last show was in December. And then I, I PCS'd in the military. It's called a permanent change of station. And that is um, about every two to three years, they'll pick you up and they'll move you to another base because they want to just kind of get you in a fresh assignment help build you and develop you and get you exposure to different units and places and missions. So for me, that next job was actually over here in Scott Air Force Base, which is right outside of St. Louis, Missouri. Instead of F-22s, we have more of the heavy aircraft here. So in my direct unit, we have something called the C-21. You guys may have heard of that. It's a, uh, it's a Learjet. And then we've got KC-135, so refueling tankers and um, something called a C-40. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but it's really just an Air Force tricked out 737 that is used to fly generals and congressional leaders around. So not as sexy as the F-22, but at the same time, I'm really loving my assignment here because it's a change of pace, which gives me a little bit more time to invest in my own personal projects, to have fun, to enjoy the city of St. Louis where I live. And 
it's awesome. Um, so yeah, hopefully that give you a little bit of background on me. I just wanted you guys kind of set the scene a little bit to know that, Hey, I'm not too old. I'm not too far removed from sitting in your shoes in college. And, uh, and yeah, so, um, if you have any questions kind of about that, we can, we can get to that at the end, but what I also wanted to jump into now is um, giving you guys some highlights on, you know, maybe why you should join the Air Force. Again, my job is not to convince you to join the Air Force. And in fact, I'm the biggest proponent of saying the Air Force is not for everyone. The military is not for everyone. So I don't want anyone getting into the military or getting into the Air Force for the wrong reasons. But there are some really amazing benefits that you all might not be aware of. And if any point in your career, um, that's something you want to pursue, I think it's just valuable knowledge for you guys to have. And so the first thing I kind of like to share when I'm doing events like this is um, what I like to call just how the military or the Air Force kickstarts your career. And what I mean by that is like when I was in high school, like I told you guys, I thought I was going to fly. But then once I realized I didn't want to do that for a pretty significant period of time, I had no idea what I wanted to do in life. I had no idea what career field I wanted to go into. But I had a little bit of comfort because the way the military works is that you're going to be guaranteed a job. You have job security, and they're going to put you in some sort of career field where you're able to learn a trade, a skill, build all of that wealth of knowledge, and really just kickstart your career because you're going to have some incredible experiences. So the Air Force will teach you a trade. It will pay for all of your training. So yeah, I'm talking to you pilots. They will pay for all of your flight training, all of your hours all of your certifications, and uh, you'll be really set up for success. And it's not just for pilots either. I mean, I know ATC, so for you controllers out there, if you're interested in that, like the Air Force is a pretty good gig for that because they will pay for all of your training. And then once you do your time, at a minimum, you owe five years, like you're like, I'm done. You can peace out, take all of that, all of that investment the Air Force has spent into you, and you can go and join the civilian sector and uh, pretty much have all that experience and, you know, no debt or student loans and, and be ready to go. So there's a really big benefit there for those who are interested. And um, I know that's a big perk that a lot of people join for. Like, it's okay to not like join just because you want to serve your country. Like, I mean, maybe you can tell people that and be a little bit humble, but at the same time, like, Hey, there's nothing wrong with joining the air force for personal reasons or to get a few of the benefits and do your time and then get out and do something else. So it's pretty cool there. Um, following along those same lines, guys, like the different benefits in the air force, um, healthcare, right? I know you guys are in college. Maybe you're still in your parents' healthcare or whatever, but it gets a little bit pricey once you get out. And, um, Let's just say that the Air Force pretty much covers everything. I have never had to pay a bill for any sort of healthcare, dental, medical, surgeries I've had. I broke bones. I was even in vacation overseas on my personal leave and I broke up my ankle and uh, <laughs> the Air Force medevaced me out of there. They paid for all of my travel. They actually booked me a first class ticket on Singapore Airlines all the way back. It was crazy. But uh, so the Air Force takes care of all of that. You won't pay a single cent for any sort of medical bills while you're in the Air Force, um, which is really, really cool because you just, it's another thing you don't have to worry about. A lot of people ask about the paycheck, right? You know, People want to make money. I'm the same way. And as an officer in the Air Force, the pay really isn't that bad. It's it's pretty decent. And if you guys are curious on the exact numbers, it's all public information. So you can just go ahead and Google it and you can see what, what you'd make for different jobs. I will say pilots make even more. They give you bonuses for being pilots and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. But the key thing about the paycheck that not many people realize is that a lot of the income is tax-free. You guys know that taxes can take a big amount of your paycheck and so a huge, huge benefit of the Air Force is having your paycheck be a little bit tax-free. And so what is tax-free kind of depends, right? So we get a housing allowance. So every single month, um, it depends on my zip code. So for example, I live in St. Louis. So I get X amount of dollars per month that is completely tax-free income. And it goes by where you live. So if you're living in San Francisco or you're living in other, you know, Southern California or like LA or something, like the cost of living is higher. And so the Air Force will pay you more money for that. Um, so it, it does fluctuate depending on where you live. And that income, which can be several thousand dollars a month, is completely tax free. We also get what's called BAS, which stands for Basic Allowance for Sustenance. And this is for food, right? So they give me. I think it's like $500 or $600 a month just for food. And that is also tax-free. So at the end of the year, you know, there's like thirty dollars or $40,000 of income that is completely tax-free right in your pocket. And so when you compare what you're making in the civilian sector, you know, where you're having to pay a big chunk of taxes on that versus the military, it evens out. So the pay is definitely not bad at all. Um, so if you're worried about that, like I promise you, it's, it's, it can still be pretty, pretty nice. So. Moving on, um, education benefits, guys. How many of you have heard of um, 
the GI Bill. You know, it's a rhetorical question. Think in your head if you've heard of the GI Bill. But uh, essentially what it does is it will cover your full four-year tuition um, after you get out of the military. So this was started after 9-11. And if you serve over three years active duty in the Air Force, you earn your full GI Bill benefits. So just like I said, this covers full four-year tuition at any university, literally, in the United States. And I think there's some partnerships overseas too. So you will be able to go get a degree, get an advanced degree. And if you guys are sitting there wondering, well, okay, I already have a degree, so this doesn't really help me. Well, you can actually transfer it to your kids. You can transfer it to your spouse. And they even have options to like get different instrument ratings, or if you want to get like a type rating, or if you want to freaking fly helicopters or something and learn how to do that, like the GI Bill can actually cover a little bit of that as well. I've had people who have gone to law school on it and it's completely covered. And that's just three years, just three years until you get all of that. So that's a really cool benefit as well. There's other programs too, like tuition assistance that lets you actually get like a master's degree while you're serving and the Air Force will pay up to like $1,500 per class for that. So it, it, they really, seriously, like if you're interested in furthering your education and don't want to tack on more loans, there are re like an incredibly amount, a number of uh, opportunities that the Air Force can help for that as well. And the last thing I kind of want to mention on these benefits is uh, what I like to say is just the unique experiences of being in the military and the opportunities to both travel the world and live abroad. There aren't too many, you know, jobs right now where you guys can go live in Europe or go live in Japan or South Korea or something, but the military, you know, it's pretty good likelihood that if you want that, you'll be able to do it. We have bases all over the world. I'm talking Germany, Japan, Italy, Spain, uh, we've got bases in Honduras, all over Europe, all over the US, all over Hawaii. I mean, seriously, you can go anywhere. And the Air Force will send you there for two to three years. If you're interested, you can bring your family, you can bring your spouse, and you'll have a job there and you'll be able to just get that awesome cultural experience that you probably wouldn't in the civilian side. So um, like I mentioned earlier, I've had the chance to go to like six different countries and probably spend close to, I don't know, like 200, 300 days abroad since I've been in the Air Force, which has been an amazing experience. Pilots get to do it a ton, especially the heavy pilots flying like C-17s or C-5s. You know, you'll spend a lot of time overseas if you want, you know, and um, it's a really cool opportunity. So kind of my final thoughts that I touched on a little bit earlier in the beginning of what I was saying is the Air Force, it isn't for everyone. I'm the first to say that. Um, I'll be honest, I've struggled a little bit with just the way the military command structure works. You know, it can be a little bit frustrating, um, you know, when you have like some older leadership that doesn't kind of think the way I do. You know, I like to think I'm a little bit younger. And so I have kind of ideas that some people think are crazy and it can be a little bit frustrating. Like, for example, if you want to go on vacation, you have to submit paperwork and submit your leave authorization and have it signed off and do paperwork for like emergency contacts and make sure everything's good to go. And it's like, sometimes it's like, oh, just let me leave. So there are some things that are annoying and it can, it can be a bit frustrating, but at the end of the day, like it just depends what your job is. It depends what your attitude is. And a lot of times, you know, you're in it together and it really isn't that bad. But um, the biggest thing I, I just say is that if you guys are interested in doing the air force route or the military route, um, do your research, right? Ask questions, ask me questions, ask anyone else questions. Um, because even though you can get a lot of information from other people, just know that you really won't get the full picture until you join yourself. And so, you know, just kind of wrap your head around that and make sure you are getting into it for the right reasons. But for me guys, like I don't necessarily plan on doing an entire career in the air force. If you join, you don't have to stay in for 20 or 30 years, right? You can do your time for me. I'm technically eligible to get out in just two more years. Right. So I'll be, you know, 26 at that time. And so I still have like, I think my whole life ahead of me and I can start another career field and I'll be able to have on my resume for the rest of my life that I was a veteran in the U S air force. And with that comes a lot of, a lot of notoriety these days, which is really, really cool. So before we get into questions, um, cause I imagine one question would be like, okay, like if you guys are sitting there as college students at the university of North Dakota right now, like how would you go about joining the military if you want? Um, and the answer to that is, well, you can do a few different things. I'm sure you guys are familiar with ROTC. I know you guys have an ROTC detachment at University of North Dakota. It stands for Reserve Officer Training Corps. And what that does is essentially it's a college program where you'll take one or two military classes a week. And after you graduate, after you're a senior, you'll commission as an officer in the U.S. Air Force. So if you want to do that program, definitely reach out to your friends who are in it, reach out to the detachment itself, because it's pretty cool. I mean, you get some awesome benefits. For me, I went to the Air Force Academy and was doing military stuff every single day for four years. 
And through ROTC, you can do about half of that military commitment. And then you graduate and you're the exact same. We're both the same rank and you have the opportunity to go to pilot training or do any sort of career field that you want. So ROTC is a really good option. If you're in college, you do need to usually do about two years of it. So mainly targeting the freshmen who are maybe listening right now, or the sophomores, possibly the juniors, but, um, Generally speaking, it's usually for the for the first two classes if you're not in the program already. Um, now, what if you're out of college? What if you graduate from UND, you try down one path, maybe it doesn't work out for you, or maybe you're interested in joining the military after that? Well, what you'll need to do is look at what's called OTS, which stands for Officer Training School. This is about, it's about a nine-week program. So again, it's like just over two months. And uh, you go down to Maxwell, Alabama, and... Um, you essentially just do some classroom stuff, a little bit of basic training for about nine weeks. And then that's it. You commission as an officer in the air force and you can go right on your way to pilot training, um, flying jets or doing whatever you want to do or whatever career fields. So that's a really good opportunity as well. And the last thing I know I said, I'd, uh, I wanted to mention this. It's something called the air force guard and the air force reserves. I don't know how many of you guys have heard of the air national guard or the air force reserves. For me, I really didn't know much about it until I already got in the air force. But I think this is something that will be particularly interesting to you guys. I know it's something that a lot of commercial airline pilots take advantage of. And what it essentially allows you to do is to serve in the Air Force part time. So you can fly for American, you can fly for Delta, you can do whatever. And then pretty much like once a month, you'll come in and you'll do your Air Force job. So I've got a good friend of mine. He flies for American Airlines and once a month he'll come in and he'll fly F-22 Raptors at Langley Air Force Base. Like how cool is that, right? So not only does he have the opportunity to, to pursue aviation on the civilian side, but he's also able to put on the uniform once a month and um, come in and do his Air Force mission as well. So if you guys are interested in that, I can answer some more questions, but essentially the Air National Guard runs on a state by state basis. So the Guard is um, essentially it's run by the governor. And so, you know, you guys could apply for different guard units and you apply directly through them. So Vermont, for example, if you wanted to fly the F-35, you could apply to the Vermont Air National Guard. You submit your application. They like you. They interview you. And if you get hired, you'll go to pilot training. So it's about a two-year program, which the airlines have agreements that kind of let you separate for a little bit and keep your status, keep your seniority, um, and to do your Air Force mission. Usually it's about five years. They kind of let you do that time. But other than that, you know, you'll get your wings, you'll get your license, and then you guys can essentially be a fighter pilot in the Air Force and then also be flying or doing whatever you want in life as well. So that's a really good opportunity. And the reserves is just the same thing, right? So I'm active duty right now. So think of me kind of as like, the front line, the first responder, whatever. The reserves and the guard fall under that a little bit. So they're kind of our backup unit, our contingency plan. Um, and so, yeah, it's just a really, really cool opportunity for those of you that are a little bit interested in the military, but also want to do the civilian side and kind of don't know what to do. Um, so, yeah. So that's kind of all I have that I wanted to just go through here with you guys. Um, as I said, the Air Force has been amazing for me, even though I probably won't end up doing like a full 20-year career. Um, I've had the opportunity to do some amazing, amazing things. And whether you guys are interested in it, or maybe it's the last thing in life that you want to do. If you're pursuing aviation, you're going to be involved with the military at some point, or you're going to be flying with people who are in the, who are in the military. So I hope just at a minimum, I was able to give you guys a little bit of insight into kind of life in the military in general. But what I'd love to do, I know we have a few more minutes here, is I want to jump into some of the questions you guys have. Um, so Colin, I don't know if you want to facilitate that or if people want to drop them in the chat or pop up on video or whatever is going on. But if there are any questions, I would love to take those now and hopefully I can uh, help answer some stuff for you guys. All right. Awesome. Hey, uh, so I'm going to, uh, Colin's having screen issues, so I'll, okay. uh, <laughs> so maybe I'll do that if you don't mind. Um, sure, yeah. Uh, so, so first thing, I have too many questions, but I hope, uh, <laughs> I hope I can get some of the students' questions because I have to say you have the coolest videos uh, of anybody online. So uh, I, I always appreciate you watching. Yeah. <laughs> phenomenal. Phenomenal. Thank you. Uh, so the uh, first question we have is from an anonymous attendee. It said, uh, would the Air Force reimburse some flight training that has been previously completed? So that's a good question. Um, they don't reimburse anything that's been done. So if you guys have like loans or debt from, you know, before you were in the Air Force, unfortunately, they won't pay that. However, like I mentioned earlier, there are opportunities if you guys do want advanced ratings or other certificates or whatever training you need, um, that will be covered. But yeah, so unfortunately, while they won't go back in time, at least for the people there who haven't done that yet, you can, guys can start thinking about that because there should be some opportunities for you guys, you know, to get all that covered. I mean, like I said, you guys can go to pilot training 
And you don't have to have a single hour in a jet. A lot of my friends who are flying heavy aircraft or fighter jets never even stepped foot in a plane before day one of pilot training at the United States Air Force. There is no requirement to have any sort of flight training or hours or PPL or anything like that. So yeah, I mean, seriously, if you do though, what I will say is like you guys coming from UND or who have done a little bit of aviation time, that will absolutely give you a leg up though. It'll make you a little more, little bit more competitive to apply. And then you'll also have a little bit of an easier time while the rest of your classmates are like trying to figure out, you know, the basics of aviation, you guys will kind of have a little bit of a leg up. <clears throat> awesome. So, um, the, the next question that I have here, you might've just started to touch on this, but <laughs> I, I see this question a lot from, um, it comes from Robert, uh, and he asks, what are some ways that I can stand out to have a better chance at getting a pilot slot in the air force? And maybe I'll give you just a little bit of color on sure. that too. You know, obviously, as you know, uh, you know, through UND, many years, we have a lot of people going into a variety of military officer slots. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, there's a lot of dependent factors that we can't control, right? Like numbers they're going to take for pilots this year versus not. So there's a lot of factors that we can't control. But maybe you could help him understand a little bit of sure. like, how do I make myself more competitive? Yeah. So what I'll start out by saying, guys, is this is a good time to be a pilot in the Air Force. There has been a pilot shortage for several years, um, mainly because of the lure of the commercial side, right? Like it's well known that the commercial side, they pay some good amount of money. And so a lot of pilots are getting kind of drawn into that. And so the Air Force is looking to bring on more pilots. They're constantly wanting more pilots. So right now, these years, whether whatever year you are at UND, like it's a great time to go for it because there are more pilot slots than there really has ever been before. But in terms of standing out, what I always like to say is that the Air Force wants someone who has a resume and a little bit of a track record of being able to balance a lot of different stuff, right? When you get in the Air Force, you're going to have a lot thrown at you. From day one, you know, you're going to be a leader. You're going to be in charge of people. You could be like the mission commander, you know, the, you can be the aircraft commander if you're in a heavy aircraft, like that type of thing. Like they want someone who um, can handle those, who those positions. So if you're able to be in any sort of club or if you're able to, you know, I don't know, take advantage of different opportunities and like be in leadership roles as well, that will be huge. Other than that, grades are always a big thing in the Air Force. If you guys are able to take some math science classes, that will help. Again, there's no requirements. You don't have to be a math major or an engineering major. You can actually major in anything you want and be a pilot in the Air Force, which is cool. But try to make yourself stand out by having good grades, being a well-rounded student. And at the end of the day, when it's time to complete that application, um, there are different things you need to do. There's stuff called the TBAS, which is your test of basic aviation skills. And that's going to be like kind of like a pilot version of the SAT where you're having to do some basic navigation stuff and some other multiple choice questions. All of that you can study for online. It's really not that hard. But studying for that and getting the highest score possible um, is going to really set you up for success in terms of being a pilot. Awesome. Okay. Now it's my turn. I have a, a <laughs> okay. I'm on like 25 questions. Uh, so I grew up in San Diego, uh, just awesome. north of Miramar. So, you know, when I was growing up, that was still Top Gun. That was kind of, uh, yeah. as far as like air shows go, that was probably the best like military show of might, you know, mm -hmm. and I went to Oshkosh all the time, love Oshkosh, but it's a very different vibe, right? Like they might have some military stuff, but like Miramar was like the <laughs> like military firepower. Yes. So I'm just curious now, you get to go to all over the world to all these shows. What do you think, like, if I want to go see the best military show, what's the best one these days? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. So, I mean, obviously, a lot of the civilian shows have, like you said, a lot of uh, a lot of military these days. So, like, you know, there's something called Fleet Week. So San Francisco does a Fleet Week um, where it's really Navy heavy. The Blue Angels go every year and it's a bunch of military performers, which is really, really cool. The one negative side of air shows is that usually they don't send multiple jet teams to the same show because they want to spread the resources. They don't want to send F-22 and F-35 and F-16 and A-10 to the same show because there's multiple air shows going on the same weeks. But this past year, because of COVID, because a lot of air shows were canceled, they were sending all of us to the same sh show. So pretty much every show was like Thunderbirds. F-22, F-35, A-10, F-16. It was really, really cool. They're doing a little bit of that this next season as well. So if you're able to travel, like try to hop on that because it's pretty rare that you're going to get like a full lineup of, uh, of everything going on. But um, yeah, what I would say is just
just look at the schedules because you're right. Oshkosh is cool from the civilian side, but from the military side, like I, when I, when we went with the F-22, the aerobatic box there at that airfield is so small that we weren't even able to do our full demo. We could only like take off and do some burner burner passes, which, you know, was cool, but it wasn't the full thing. So check the schedules. It differs every year. There's not a right answer because the air show schedule for each team is on like a two year basis. So try to look and see what teams are performing where maybe you'll have two of your favorites at one show and then go to those as well. But it depends. I mean, there's no like 22 goes to this show every single year, whatever. Um, just at a basic level, if you really wanted an answer, the Las Vegas show at Nellis, the, it's the Thunderbirds homecoming show. That's pretty sweet because they have F-22 stationed there too. So even if the demo team's not there, they still do like a full combat search and rescue demo. And it's really, really cool. And then capped off by the Thunderbirds at their home station. So recommend that one. Oh, good. I'm going. And it's Vegas. <laughs> yeah, uh, Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we've got a next one from an anonymous attendee. Uh, it says, what do you enjoy most of your day-to-day -day life in the Air Force? Yeah. So again, when I was on the demo team, day-to-day -day life was crazy. It was insane. It was so hectic. And I know I touched on that a little bit more, but for me now in my different job, kind of more low stress, a little bit of a slower pace. The biggest thing I enjoy is just being able to, I mean, live the Air Force life, as I like to say, like I can walk out of my office and head right out on the flight line and just sit there and watch jets take off. I'm on photo authorization letters to where I can hop in the back of a KC-135 or a C-17 and just kind of like go for a ride and really experience that, which is cool. Um, also, there's different opportunities every single day. You really never know what you're going to get in the Air Force. Every day is different. And so it's kind of exciting going in and being like, ah, what's going to happen today? And like, oh, Today, we've got different F-22s landing or F-35s or, you know, heck, we have like different distinguished visitors come and come like the president or like the first lady or different congressional leaders. They come all the time. Um, and it's uh, it's just kind of cool to be around that atmosphere. Um, and so, yeah, I enjoy it. Every day is different and it's just exciting to be around. That's awesome. All right. Another one of mine here. Uh, so, you know, we have a lot of students at UND, as you know, that are that are not pilots. And you did talk a lot like yes. yourself. You're not a pilot. Um, not a pilot. You know, we get people that are like airport management or unmanned yes. airport systems or um, aviation management. You know what? Uh, just maybe off the top of your head. And again, you've already alluded a little bit to it. Yeah. But some other like jobs that, you know, people coming sure. out of college might get to experience in the Air Force. Sure. So there are over 200 different career fields you can join in the Air Force. Yeah, you heard me right, 200. So pretty much any career field you could think of that exists ever, the Air Force does as well. We're fully functioning, autonomous. You know, we've got doctors and lawyers and financial officers, even people who run like the gyms and the golf courses, if you want to do stuff like that. You can actually be like a culinary chef as well. Um, but in terms of like a little bit more aviation specific, since, you know, that's the conference we're talking at here, I mentioned ATC. That's a huge, huge job in the Air Force. Well, they'll pay for all your training and certs, which is really, really cool. Airfield management's a huge one as well. I'm good friends with my airfield operations and airfield management officers who, you know, they're the ones, they run the flight line, guys. They are the ones that are scheduling everything and coordinating stuff and leading a team of enlisted people who do more of the tactical stuff stuff and all that exists. Um, so seriously, if you guys have any specific questions on certain career fields, one, I guarantee you the Air Force has it. And two, um, yeah, like I said, you can take that experience. And then if you want to peace out and join the civilian side, like you've got all your stuff paid for and all the stuff on your resume um, and you're not going to have any loans or whatever. So it's a, it's a really cool opportunity. All righty. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to ask the next one for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. sorry. My, my uh, iPad kind of crashed on me there. So you're I'm good. You're good. Now. Um, so the next one also comes from an anonymous attendee. So it says, what is a piece of advice you would give to someone joining the air force that you wish that you knew when you were joining the air force? Yeah. So I say this a lot. And um, once you join the air force, like you can kind of get bogged down by everything. You can kind of hide in your office, hide behind your desk, especially if you're not a pilot. But there are so many different opportunities out there. A lot of people who see my videos on social media or my Instagram stuff, they ask me like, how did you get that opportunity? And literally 99% of the time, all I do is I just go make friends and I go knock on the door and introduce myself to people. And I apply for different things. Like if there's an exercise that's going on in like Japan, for example, I throw my name in the hat and I apply for everything because I want to take advantage of all these opportunities the Air Force has. They exist they're out there you can have an amazing experience or you can have a horrible experience if your attitude's not the right way. Just remember at the end of the day, like you guys signed up for it. The air force isn't drafting anyone right now. So it's your decision that wants to sign up. So realize that, you know, it's not a whole life thing. Like you don't have to do it for your entire life and just, uh, you know, try to enjoy it while you can. And 
you know, I seriously think that it's uh, it really is a good opportunity for you guys just to experience a little bit if you're interested. All right. Awesome. Looks like we got another one um, from another anonymous attendee. So how easy is it to switch roles while serving in the Air Force? I know you talked about how there's a lot of jobs and how you can kind yeah. of change that up. So how easy is it if you if you do want to change your roles? Sure. So I wish it were easier, but as you guys know, like the Air Force invests a lot of time and money. So they're a little bit reluctant sometimes to like completely switch someone, especially for pilots. Like if you guys are a pilot and complete the program and want to switch to something else, that's a little bit more difficult. But what I will say is if you start the pilot training program, right? So pilot training is currently two years. The first year you're flying the T-6, the Texan II. Um, and then after that, you're also flying either the T-38 or the new T-7 that's coming out, which is really cool. Or you're flying the T-1, um, the Jayhawk. And so if at any point during that two years, you're like, nope, I don't want to do this. Pilot training isn't for me. You can take yourself out of it. You can drop out as you want to say, and you'll pretty much get your top preference for any other career field. So I know you mentioned, sir, like UAS. So we have a bunch of drone pilots in the air force for RPAs. That's a really big mission. Um, a couple of my buddies are doing that out in Vegas right now, and they actually really love it. So you can do something like that. You can maybe even be a backseater. We call them scissors. So navigators, if you guys saw top gun, you could be like the goose. We have those in F 15s, um, or you can do any sort of career field that you want. Now, if you're not a pilot, if you're like me, it is a lot easier to change career fields. It's still not the easiest thing ever. And usually they make you do at least, at least two years before they say, hey, you're eligible to cross train into something else. Just they want to make sure you're like super sure that you don't want to do it. But those opportunities do exist. And if you're persistent, usually you'll have a good chance of being able to move it to something else. Awesome. Uh, and next one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask uh, my question. So you kind of okay. really hit a lot of stuff and I do awesome job. So you talked about you're going to have a future, you know, you're not going to be in the Air Force all the time. Do you have a plan? Which, what, what you think you want to do once, once you get out of the Air Force? Yeah, well, my dream seriously is to keep doing social media and kind of content creation stuff. Um, I've got a million ideas. Literally, I've got like a phone here with like, it's just so many different video topics and ideas. A lot of them are like outside of the military too. And they're just like different cool, whether they're aviation projects or other type of stuff I want to cover. Um, and so really the biggest limiting factor for me is just like having time in the day. So if I'm able to kind of invest and do it kind of as a full-time job or something, that would be my dream. But at the same time, I want to kind of continue... Um, you know, maybe even serving the Air Force. So I talked to you guys about the reserves. I may actually join the reserves, so make it a part-time job. And that way I'm able to have a little bit more time doing something else, but also still keeping my commission as an officer in the Air Force. But I don't really know, you know, I'm kind of the type of person that just likes to try new things. So that honestly is probably the biggest reason I might not make a career out of the Air Force is just, you know, I kind of want to experience what life's like on the outside and to see what I can do there. And again, nothing's really wrong with that. You know, people will encourage that in the Air Force and support you. And that's one of the biggest things I like about the military is that no one's going to be like, oh, screw this guy because he's not, he's wanting to get out. Like people will support you with pretty much whatever you want to do, which is, which is really cool. All right. That's so awesome. So um, next question I actually have as well is it something that I, I'm kind of interested in is the, the, the guard and the, uh, the part-time yeah. duty you're kind of talking about. So mm -hmm. can you be called into active duty if you're part of that? Like, let's say you're fine, like you said, for American and mm -hmm. we have to go to some sort of war. Can you be called into active duty if you're, if you're in that role? So, I mean, for example, if we had like a huge World War III or something, I mean, at that point, yeah, I mean, who knows? They may even reinstate the draft at that point. So like, yes, that potential is there. However, they don't really do that. But what I will say is you can deploy as active uh, or sorry, in the reserves or the guard. Um, but again, the airlines have a clause in their contracts where they allow that. They give you up to five years of pretty much like doing active duty status in the military and you'll still keep your job. You'll still keep your seniority. You'll be good. And so it's a good partner program that they have. And a lot of times, if you want, for example, to, um, you know, do more time in the reserves, maybe take some time away from the airlines, like you can sign up for that and do a little bit more time and serve more than once a month if you'd like. But um, generally speaking, usually the reserves aren't called first. It's going to be the active duty guys. And so if something's really crazy in the world, yeah, I mean, that is there. So just know that there is a potential for that. But um, again, not super likely. All right, cool. Um, got another one here. So if you could go back in time, would you have applied to the same role as the Air Force? Um, or would you have done something different? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would have done the same thing for sure. Seriously, I've had like a dream 
career in the Air Force so far. So I wouldn't have changed a thing. Um, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, there's some things I would have done differently, obviously, or maybe, you know, I don't know. Um, but for the most part, like I'm happy with where I'm at. Um, a lot of people ask me like, Hey, like, would I go back and be a pilot or something? I always joke. Cause I feel like I'm around aircraft more than even pilots are these days, which is kind of funny. So it's like best of both worlds for me. I get to do my job and, um, you know, be around aircraft. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm not the one strapped into a fighter jet pulling, you know, 10, like, you know, nine G's and puking the whole time. So I get to have a little bit, I get to have all the uh, benefits of it without any of the prep and all the briefing and training. So I'm loving it right now. <laughs> Awesome. So I, I have a couple of uh, not necessarily military or aviation related content, but since you do Love so it. much cool social media stuff, I thought maybe I'd ask you now, like we all are on social <laughs> media, right? We all, yes. we all do stuff there. And so when we see videos like yours, I mean, they're just mind boggling. So I actually have a couple questions with that. Um, the first thing is, you know, guys like me, right? I've got my iPhone 12 and I've got my uh, GoPro, <laughs> but what do, what do you think for like the average person, what's, what is, what is like good way to capture like aviation related footage or content? What do you think? Yeah. So, I mean, seriously, action cameras are like the coolest thing ever, right? You know, you can just mount a GoPro in your jet or even on the wings and capture some really incredible stuff. I will say the coolest toy that's come out in the last few years is the 360 cameras. So GoPro has one, it's called the GoPro max. So it does normal GoPro shooting. And then it also does 360. And so you can pull that into any software, even GoPro has a 360 editing software that's super easy to use. And you guys can literally like manipulate the angles and turn all the way around and almost get like an outside of the jet perspective or Cessna, whatever you guys are flying. And it can be really, really cool. And so, yeah, definitely strap some GoPros on there, guys. Just showcase your stuff. If you want to start making videos, it's really easy to do. And being a pilot, like the potential is so easy because it's just cool. Even if you guys don't even edit anything, it's like, wow, this is cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, what I always like to say is for the longest time, like I kind of had a barrier from starting content creation because I was so worried about having the most amazing quality or having the most amazing cameras. And I was just like making excuses for myself, but like, that doesn't matter. You can really create anything, right? Like a lot of videos, like I'll actually still bring my cell phone around and take photos and use clips from there because it's the best camera is the camera you have on you. And a lot of times it's easy to just have this thing. So go for it. This thing has an amazing capability. GoPros, get one of those, strap them up, do your thing, capture it, and uh, just have some fun. Awesome. And another thing with social media, you know, everybody's looking to try to differentiate themselves. <laughs> uh, like, uh, like maybe you kind of answered it, but I mean, somebody yeah. who you're in, you're in the front stage of like everybody with the with the demo team. I mean, the front stage of everybody like me that's in aviation. So. Mm -hmm. Are there any like tips or things that you've learned? Like, how do you differentiate yourself in, in terms of like, there's so many cool aviation social media yeah. followers. Like, how do you differentiate yourself? Yeah, no, well, that's a great point. Because the biggest thing is being able to differentiate yourself because you're never really going to stand out unless you're doing something. This is what I like to say. You're not going to stand out unless you're doing something different than someone else or if you're doing it better than everyone else. So you can take that route too. If you're doing the same type of content as everyone else, but your quality's better, your story's better, like you're going to be here. But if you're doing something and presenting it in a way that's completely different, you'll blow up, you'll push up, people will notice your stuff as well. So it kind of depends, right? Um, there's a million ways to tell a story and story is the biggest thing. So for me, there's like a lot of people, you know, posting military content or doing videos, but I just kind of found a, a, like a specific niche that not many people are doing. And then also like I practiced a lot, right? Like I've never been to a film class or a photo video, whatever. I just learned from YouTube and trial and error and spent my weekends, like learning how to edit and tell stories and, and just trial and error. Right. And, and I have like a passion for it. So really, if you have a passion for it, if you're excited, if you want to invest some time in learning different tricks and tips, like that's, you know, you'll go a long way, but probably the biggest thing I can recommend is follow like a creator that you like, whether that's an aviation account or someone like follow them and write notes down of like, what would you do different? Right. So a lot of times I'll follow people and I was like, Oh, that's super cool. I think I could make that video, but do it a little bit different. So I'll be the first to admit, I steal ideas from people all the time, but I change things and manipulate it and turn it into like me and my product. And so while it's inspired by them, it looks like something completely different. And then Sam, people are like, Oh, Sam, you're so creative. And I'm like, actually, I just stole that from this guy, but no one really knew because I made it look a little bit different. So yeah, just, just another tip and trick you guys can do if you're interested in that type of stuff.
It's definitely not called stealing and business is called <laughs> benchmarking or yes, we are benchmarking yes. and modeling. Our, benchmarking our, and modeling. Yeah, I love exactly. to do that. Yeah. It's my exactly. favorite. <laughs> awesome. Um, thank you for that. Um, okay. We have another anonymous question here. Um, if we are looking to go the OCS route, is it better to wait until after graduation or can we start while we're still working on graduating? Yeah, so you can still um, work on your package before you start, um, before you graduate. I don't know if you guys knew um, a girl, UND grad, I guess two years ago, her name was Sawyer Murray. Um, she actually married a, uh, my roommate from the Air Force Academy, which is crazy. And so she's actually in pilot training, right? She's actually about to finish pilot training. So she went to UND, applied for OCS or OTS, excuse me, and um, she flew T-38s. She went down to Shepard Air Force Base and you know, she's going to be flying fighter jets pretty soon, which is really cool. And so she worked on her application while she was a senior. Cause I was like helping her through that a little bit. Um, and so as long as you're like on the track to graduate at the normal time frame, the air force will totally let you like follow that path. That way, once you graduate, you're not waiting a couple years or something without a job, you can go right into the OTS route. So yes, definitely start looking at that. It's usually around the end of your first semester, you can start looking to apply again. If you're interested in that, just go to airforce.com and Google like OTS all the information's there, everything you need to apply, the recruiters you need to get in touch with, and you can start there. All righty. Uh, I think we're starting to wrap up here. Um, if you have any final words or final thoughts that you'd like to leave <laughs> with the students, again, on behalf of everyone at SAMA, we'd love, we'd just thank you for doing this and uh, kind of being our, our test run here, and it worked well. So if you have any concluding thoughts, please let us, let's hear it. Yeah. Um, all I'd say is seriously, guys, like if you're interested in the Air Force, um, seriously, I, I say go for it. Right. Because at the end of the day, the worst thing that's going to happen is you have an awesome experience and something that not many other people say they can. And I really think it will help you in your lives. But if you don't want to join the Air Force, there's nothing wrong with that. And hopefully at a minimum, maybe you have a little bit more information. So maybe you can help people out if they're curious about it or you can understand people when you're you know, flying a triple seven one day and you look over and your FO is uh, someone who's a former military guy that's only flied single flown single seat fighters. And he's horrible at, uh, at flying because he's not used to being in a crew. You'll understand why a little bit. So at the end of the day, like the military has been really, really cool. Um, but do your research. Don't just listen to me and be like, oh, Sam said join. So I'm going to join or whatever. Do your research because things will vary depending on, you know, your priorities in life. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for having me guys. Um, I promised Swain Martin, I'd say hi for him to all you guys. So he says, what's up and uh, keep doing awesome stuff. And I look forward to maybe serving along some of you guys sometime in the future. So if there's ever anything you need from me, let me know, hit me up in the DMS on Instagram or YouTube or whatever. And I can uh, hopefully answer some of the questions you have, but keep it up guys. And I hope you have an amazing rest of the conference as well. And it was an honor to be here today and talk to you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sam. We really, really appreciate it. Hope you have a great yeah. rest of your day. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Take care, and uh, I'll see you hopefully sometime in the future. Sounds great. Thanks, man. Bye.